I've got two poems here by Irving. One's a Jeremiah, it's a kind of a red flame Jeremiah. And the other is, uh, <laughs> the other is a kind of, I guess the other one is to some degree the personal price in terms of your relationships of being a Jeremiah. And I'll read that one first. It's a bit more nuanced. I'll see if I can catch the shifts of tone on the wing. It's called berry picking. Silently, my wife walks on the still wet furts. Now dark green, the leaves are full of metaphors. Now lit up is each tiny lamp of blueberry. The white nails of rain have dropped and the sun is free. And whether she bends or straightens to each bush to find the children's laughter among the leaves, her quiet hands seem to make the quiet summer hush. There is our children, patient she is with these. I only vex and perplex her. Madness, rage are endearing, perhaps, put down upon the page. Even silence, day long and sullen, can then enamor as restraint or classic discipline. So I envy the berries she puts in her mouth, the red and spurting juice that stains her lips. I shall never taste that good to her, nor will they displease her with a thousand barbarous jests. How they lie easily for her hand to take, part of the unoffending world that is hers. Here, beyond complexity, she stands and stares and leans her marvelous head as if for answers. No more the easy soul my childish craft deceived nor the simpler one for whom yes is always yes. No, now her voice comes to me from far away, though her lips are redder than the raspberries. Okay, now this was a completely different tone, so this is a, a stem winder. Final reckoning after Theognis, and Theognis was a sixth century Greek poet who wrote, I think, um, elegiac couplets, I don't think, uh, Irving ever wrote, wrote an elegiac couplet. Uh, a couplet, I mean by that. Okay, so here we go. Me? I feel safest in cemeteries. Horizontal humans lie peacefully. No anger or mischief in them. No hate and deceit. Even if darkness comes when I find myself standing near a slab, time and fierce squalls have tilted towards me so that I think of the moles underfoot tearing the flesh clean off the skeleton. I have no fear or sadness. Why should I? The dead are surely more fortunate to be done at last with life's ills and chills, with the lies needed for mere survival and the mean compromises must make before he can call some small space his own. Bah, the comedy is not worth a frog's fart. Only priests and rabbis think otherwise, metaphysicians and crazed Bolsheviks. For myself, I love the tranquil boneyards, both for the evergreen moral they teach and for the asylum they give against the violent longings that agitate the caged animals of Chicago and Madrid, of Moscow, Belfast, Belfast, and London. Tombs, I say, are reassuring when men are swine, smiling wolves with capped teeth, the cities reeking of scribbling whores, and those who need no bribes to pimp for them. To these, O oh Zeus, send plagues. Destroy them all. Don't leave behind a single specimen and rid the earth of locusts, snakes, and weevils. Let the new seedlings come up tall and green. Preserve all poets mad and marvelous. Guard them against the fury of envious dust. <laughs> 